Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are previewing uh, numerous college football teams individually with uh, regular contributor Steve from collegefootballwinning.com uh, all offseason. And uh, right now, we're going to discuss Texas A&M. Interesting, uh, interesting team this year. Steve, thanks for being back with us. Thank you for having me back, Peter. All right, so Texas A&M, you know, of course, Johnny Menzel is returning, reigning Heisman Trophy winner. And uh, at Pinnacle right now, Texas A&M's odds to win the BCS are about 14 to 1. It's plus 1376, and those are the fourth shortest odds uh, at Pinnacle. There's only three other teams given a better chance than Texas A&M to, uh, to win the, uh, the BCS championship. Uh, what's your general, what are some of your general uh, first thoughts on Texas A&M heading into 2013? Well, uh, first, we're really considering, you know, doing a betting preview. We we're looking at two different things. How do we predict Texas A&M is going to do overall against the spread this mm -hmm. year? And if we're looking to place a futures bet, how will Texas A&M do? What are their, how likely is it that they're going to win the 2014 BCS National Championship? So if we, if we start by looking at Texas A&M against the spread, we look at expectations, and certainly expectations are through the roof Absolutely. for Texas A&M. Yes. When you have these high expectations, there's only one place to go, and that is down when they are so super high. So we look for, if you're going to have a good against the spread season, the general rule is put three things into perspective. One is you improve on your straight up wins from the prior season. Well, Texas A&M had 11 wins. They were 11 and two straight up. So it, it, going through the SEC, it looks improbable that Texas A&M is going to improve on 11 wins. So we start there. Then we look at their preseason ranking. They're going to be in everybody's top five preseason. That's pretty much guaranteed, no matter what polls come out and when. So starting with a super high preseason ranking, that is a, another qualifier for high expectations. And then you look at the against the spread season that they had immediately before. They were eight and five against the spread for Texas A&M. First of all, for anybody, that's profitable. Second of all, for Texas A&M, that was their second best against the spread year in more than 10 years. So it, the, the tendency when you put those things together is to suggest that they will have a down against the spread year, certainly something less than what they had in 2012. So against the spread, we are not high on this team overall in general for 2013. All right, so, so, so you're saying that uh, you expect Texas A&M to not be a good bet this year because of their high expectations. But in college football, Steve, I mean, we've previewed these kinds of games. You've seen this. A lot of these elite teams in college football, uh, especially in recent years, have, you know, they just can't set the lines high enough. The public's been pounding them, and the public's been winning game in and game out. You know, like Alabama, you know, they'll be like a 23-point road favorite against another SEC team, or they'll be like, you know, a 20-point home favorite against another team ranked in the top 10, and they'll cover and cover and cover. So we've seen that with with LSU, with Alabama, and a lot of time, Boise State, and the books have gotten actually killed, and the public's been uh, killing uh, these past few years with these elite college football teams, but you don't think that uh, Texas A&M will be one of those teams this year, because, you know, they were still a good bet last year, even though everyone knew how great uh, Manziel was. They were good at 8-5 and five against the spread. Yeah. However, this is a Texas A&M team. They're the new kids on the block in the SEC, and they are returning the fewest starters of any team in the SEC. Now, with all due respect to the great tradition that Texas A&M has and how good a football team they are right now, they are still not Alabama, who can just look at all of their past recruiting years and say, we are ready to reload. Texas A&M is not at Alabama's level yet. So it is unreasonable to think that Texas A&M can have the fewest returning starters in the SEC and yet have... Alabama-like production this year. All right, so you expect uh, Texas A&M to be overrated this year. What do you make of their uh, odds to win the BCS, 14-1 to 1 and fourth best? Do you think they should have the fourth shortest odds of all the teams in college football to win the BCS? Now, in terms of winning the 2014 BCS National Championship, we go back to that article we wrote on SBR about the 60% rule teams winning BCS National Championships have to meet th at least three of five criteria. They all have, all 15 in the past have, and Texas A&M actually meets three of the five criteria that people can read about in that 60% rule article. That said, Johnny Manziel, obviously Johnny Football, so much hype is surrounding him. Only one, he, he's still going to be an underclassman for 2013. Right. There's only been one underclassman in BCS championship history that has won a national championship. 
And that was A.J. McCarron at Alabama in 2011. But there was a world of difference between these two guys in terms of how they contributed to their offense. Johnny Manziel was responsible for 70.46% of the Aggies' offensive production in 2012 versus A.J. McCarron in 2011. He was responsible for just uh, a little less than 47%. So what that adds up to is when you know there is one guy that is basically making your offense go, you can scheme against that one guy mm-hmm. a, lot more easy, a lot more easily than if you had an entire team to scheme against. So that's number one. Number two is uh, with Johnny Mansell back there, even though he's Johnny Football and he's amazing, one injury to him and suddenly more than 70% of your offensive output is gone. And they're relying on a backup quarterback. And no backup quarterback in the country, no matter how good they are, is Johnny Manziel right now. Okay, well, we'll see how things shake out, Steve. Thanks so much. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. We'll talk to you again very soon.